UK students. So we went through today about how to uh, perform certain tasks using Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. The uh, objective there is that our PSMT maths assignment is coming up soon. Um, one of the, the criteria descriptors is to demonstrate your technological skills, you know, efficient use of technology, for example. And just typing, let's say, if I put in a table here in Microsoft Word and I start filling in these numbers manually and, and in maybe on my little calculator, look, I know you can't see it, but hopefully you can hear me typing on a calculator and let's say I got the number and put it in. This is not using technology effectively or efficiently. Um, because we have special software in Microsoft Excel to do things like this for us. In a, and that's a skill we want to develop. Um, today, uh, in Microsoft Word, we need to be able to make diagrams. Now, you know I make diagrams using different software on my iPad, and that works for me. But just to make you aware that there are methods you can use to uh, make diagrams here in Word itself. So we were learning how to make three-dimensional diagrams so that we could label some geometry that we're working on. So here, um, I'm gonna do a little bit differently than what Mrs. Hall and Mrs. North are recommending. Um, it still achieves the same result. Um, so if I needed to make a cube, look, I've seen, I've seen students who just use this. Um, that kind of works. Um, and to, to have, if I need it to be empty, I can change it to be no fill. That's pretty close, but you can see that the lines in the background are missing, so. Uh, also, it doesn't really give me much, fle much flexibility in the dimensions. So let's say if I want this to be a little bit larger, more square-like shape, it's going to be a bit more challenging for me to try to achieve that using these um, controls here. So I am limited with what it looks like. So if I go to Insert, Shapes, I want to pick this rectangle option here. And here I'm going to, so if I want to make a cube, I'm going to try my best. I think if I hit shift, yeah, it's a perfect square. So holding down shift, I can let go and it has it activated. Now it automatically fills it in with a blue. I don't need that. So I'm going to go up here to my toolbar. I notice that while, while this is active, so if I select it again, I get a new option up here that says shape format. And in here I've got the tools to try to change the way it looks like. So here's my paint bucket. I'm going to change it to no fill. And here I could change the weighting if I really wanted to or change the outline color if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to take this shape. I'm going to do Control-C, Control-V. Or if you're on the Mac, you do Command-C, Command-V. And I'm just going to move it around and offset a little bit. So if I offset it like this, it starts to look a little bit more three-dimensional. Now I just need to put in my connecting lines, the diagonals here. So I go to Insert, Shapes, and I'm going to pick a line. And I'm going to try my very best to line this up on my trackpad. It's a little bit tricky sometimes. Now, you'll notice that this is the wrong color. It's actually blue, and it's the wrong thickness. So by default, they always seem to be blue. I'm going to go up, up to here. While it's selected, while it's selected, I have shape format activated. And I can go up here to my line color, so make it black. I'm going to click it once more, and I've got the option here to change the weight. So it's the same thickness as the rest of my diagrams. So it's now one point. Since this edge here should be the same in all the other corners, I'm just going to copy paste it around and move them. And they seem to me that like they snap into location, which is nice. And there we go. There's our cube. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add uh, the some text boxes to label the dimensions. So I'm going to go insert uh, text box. If you're on the Windows, it looks a little different to what I've got here. So I'm just going to drag out a quick text box here. It's going to be four space centimeters. Now, if I escape from there, you'll notice, oh, I really hate why it does that. Um, you'll notice that it's uh, got an outside boundary by default. Goodness me. Ah, oh, it's moving over to this cursor bit here. The other bit is that it's also filled in with white. So it's actually going to obscure my diagram. So to get around this issue, I'll activate it, go up to here to shape format. And here I can change it to no fill, so now it doesn't obscure the things behind it. And I'm gonna go to the line, and I'm gonna have no outline. So now I can position this wherever I need it to be, and it won't disturb the, uh, the rest of my shape here. So if it's supposed to be a cube, I'm just gonna put these dimensions here. And you can tell I'm just doing copy, paste, copy, paste. There we are. What I might do, so I don't have to keep doing this over and over again. Can I delete that shape, and can I select? Is there a way to select all of this? 
I'm just holding the shift key down as I'm tapping all the pieces. I'm gonna move this over here. Oh, I missed a couple. This is very slow. It's a lot easier on my other other device, my iPad. There we go. Hopefully I got them all selected. I can move them. Goodness me. Can I do group? No. Okay, I'm going to abandon that diagram. I'm just going to move over here now. The other shape we did, which has a little bit of a difference, is we're going to make a cylinder. And the difference that we're going to make this time round is uh, I'm going to add algebraic letters to my diagram here. So um, you could pick cylinder. So once again, if I go insert shapes and I pick cylinder, um, it really makes this top surface really skinny, which doesn't give me much room to put a label in there for dimensions or radius. So again, it's a little bit more flexible if we sort of put it together by hand manually. So I can make this top surface a bit more wide and open, so I've got room. It's filled in by default, so I'm going to change it to no fill. I'm going to copy and paste it so I, I can have my bottom half of my circle. Now I want to, if I, if I move it down and they still overlap, it looks a little bit confusing, but if I make it further down but they're not overlapping, it just appears a bit clearer. I don't think you need to, but that's just personal preference of mine. I'm going to go to shapes again. I'm going to have some lines to connect the bottom to the top. It's the wrong color, wrong thickness. So I go up to here, change it to, oops, I want it to be black. And I want it to be one point of thickness. Copy and paste it to the other side. So far, it's almost the same procedure as we've done for our cube. What's different this time here is that I'm going to insert one last line and it's going to be my radius. So I'm going to put it down here at the bottom. Now this one, I want to change it to be look a little different. So I'm going to change it to red. I'm going to change it a little bit thicker. And I'm going to change it to dashed. So here underneath dashes, I can pick one I like. There we go. Now I'm going to add the labels. So similar, but a little different for our process here. I'm going to go to text box once more. Uh, maybe I'll just take one of these, copy, paste. I'll just take one of these. Now, I want this to say radius in, uh, in centimeters. So this bit here, I want it to say R, but I want it to be a mathematical R, not a, t not a type letter R. To achieve that result, I'm going to keep the ordinary text and then try my best to keep it, put my cursor next to it. And then I'm going up to here with insert, all the way to the side here, it says equation. So we can bring up the equation editor and just type the letter R. If I escape from there, it now has, an, it has a mathematical R, which is what I wanted. There's another dimension I need, so I need the height. So here, I'm outside of the shape, I'm going to draw a double-ended arrow. So on these lines, here's my double-ended arrow. And I'm going to line it up with this point here and this point here. There it is, and it's the wrong color, wrong thickness. I might make this blue, and I might make this I don't, uh, no, I won't do a dashed line for that one. I'm going to grab this and make a copy so I can use it again. This time here, I want it to be H for height or perpendicular height. So again, I would use equation editor to, to put in the mathematical H. A slight difference, uh, just so that you're aware that you can do this. I'm going to fill this shape here. So I'm going to go shape format, fill it with white. And the reason why I want to fill it with white is I want it to sort of block a little bit of these arrows here. So now it looks like the arrow is running right up and down. So that's a slight difference. Okay. And, uh, the next video, we're going to look at writing or typing out mathematical equations in Microsoft Word.